This video is a guide to programming the Draybank MIDI controller using a new editor program called Draybank Config. Now, as you probably know, there is no support for the Draybank and its software editors, but it seems a shame to abandon it just because of a few Windows compatibility issues. It's got two banks of 64 rotary knobs. It can generate many types of MIDI message, including system exclusive, and some models also have eight control voltage inputs for foot control and CV to MIDI functionality. And it's built like a tank. For this guide, I'll program five functions for a Korg microKorg. I'll do mixer levels for oscillators one and two, and wave shape and coarse and fine tuning for oscillator two. I'll try and do the same in a later video with a Novation Supernova just to show how useful a MIDI controller can be. Because even though the Supernova has many more knobs, basic functions like these still cannot be controlled simultaneously using their front panel controls. Now the Draybank controller stores MIDI messages for each of its 128 knobs in its internal memory. And these are output when the corresponding knob is turned, or if you've got the CV model, if the CV input voltage changes. Now the editor's function is to prepare these messages and store them inside the Draybank. Now this editor uses simple plain text to define the messages, so everything is upfront and easy to edit. You can type them in here one at a time, or you can load files created with a standard text editor such as Notepad. You can edit and save them to any folder and build up sets of files or presets for loading later. Now each line of text defines one knob using a list of parameters and these can be in any order. For example knob number one is written as dash kn1, knob number two is dash kn2, bank number one is dash bn1 and so on. So if we want bank number one, bn1, knob number one. The knob function is written as fu, followed by the function type. So what types do we need? Well, this is where you need to find out what message types your synthesizer uses. And as usual with standards, there are lots of them, so different synths will probably use different messages to do the same thing. There are two ways of finding out. One is to look in the synths MIDI specification, which should be in the user manual, but if not, you'll probably find it on the internet. And the other way is to deduce them from the synths MIDI output as its controls are operated. And not all synths do this, but if they do, this editor has a built-in monitor to make it easier. I'll show both methods, but we'll do the MIDI spec method first. Now don't panic if this all looks alien to you. Just take it steady and look for the mixer oscillator 1 level. You can see it needs a CC message, whatever that is, number 20, with a value ranging from 0 to 127. And this will correspond to the mix level 0 to maximum. Now CC stands for controller and is the easiest type of message to deal with. If you notice, there are lots more microcorg functions which use these, so once you've mastered one, the rest is easy. Click the functions button in the editor and look down the list for the controller function. This is second one here. You click the question mark next to it and you'll see further help for this function. And this shows a CC function is written as dash fu cc. You can use upper and lower case, it doesn't matter. It also says we need the controller number, so we can type that in, dash cc 20. Now the MIDI spec said we needed a range of 0 to 127. So we can add a range parameter, which is shown here. Dash RA 0 to 127, comma 1. The comma 1 just says use steps of 1. And the help screen also shows that this is the default range anyway. So we can keep it simple and leave it out if you want. Now you can do what I've done and type all this directly into the definitions area or you can just click the demo button which will load examples for editing and deleting as you like. 
and the demo overwrites everything in the area, so you'll see a warning if you haven't saved your definitions first. A couple more parameters worth mentioning. You can add comments anywhere in the text. Anything after a semicolon character is ignored. So we could annotate this for clarity. Ask one mix level. And finally, you can add a label parameter to define a knob label. We'll put that at the beginning just for clarity. And we'll say LA mix one. Now if you click the labels button, you can see the knob labels. Get it on the screen. And there we are, bank one, knob one has this label. Now in the graphical mode, you can swap labels around by dragging and dropping, and they can also be exported to a word processor for tweaking and printing as required. Now if you want to put a space inside the label, you need to enclose it in quotes. So you might see some examples with quotes around everything just to make sure. Now the other parameters for this function are outside the scope of this video, so we'll leave those. Now I'll repeat this for oscillator 2 mix level. And if you remember, the manual said it used CC21. Now you can either type it all in again, or simply copy and paste the original line. And we can just edit as required. So I want to call this mix 2. It's still bank number 1, but it's knob number 2, and the function is controller21. And we better change the comment as well. Ask 2 mix level. So let's test them out. You need to transmit these definitions to the Dre bank for storing in its memory. So you need to physically connect the computer MIDI output to the Dre bank MIDI in, and tell the editor which device you used. So you click MIDI out, and select the Draybank device from the list. Now in the MIDI output section, you can just click all definitions to RAM only, and it's done. Now if you've got lots of definitions, this can take several seconds, but you can save time by selecting a subset if you want. Say, just do this one, and then you can click cell, which will just send the selected items. And you don't need to select the whole line, just a portion will do. Right, why are there two types of send? Well, saving definitions to RAM only is much quicker than sending them to RAM and EEPROM. But the Draybank loses RAM definitions when it's powered off. So the RAM option is handy for testing or if the Draybank is always connected to the computer. But if you want a freestanding Draybank, and either resend the definitions using this button or click the copy RAM to EEPROM button here. So let's see the proof. We connect the Draybank MIDI output to the MicroKorg MIDI input and I'll start with a clean slate to avoid confusion. Press Shift and 3 to initialize the current program then press 3 to confirm and we can turn knobs 1 and 2 on the Draybank and you should hear the results. I'll change the pitch of oscillator 2 just to make it more obvious. Now don't worry if nothing is shown on the display, you can hear that it definitely works, but the microcorg only shows changes if that item is currently displayed. In other words, we'd have to tell the synth to display oscillator 1 mix levels in order to see oscillator 1 mix levels changing. So let's get it into that state.
now you can see the effect of Draybank's knob 1. We can change the display to oscillator 2 mix level and you can see the effect of Draybank's knob 2. Now it's disappointing Korg have designed it like this but the supernova does the same thing so maybe there's a reason. Now if this doesn't work I'm afraid troubleshooting is outside the scope of this video. Maybe a later one. So let's assume it all worked and we'll try programming oscillator 2 wave shape. At this time we'll assume there's no manual available so we'll use the monitor method instead. So connect the microcorg MIDI output to your computer's input and tell the editor by clicking MIDI in and selecting the Korg on input 1 or 2. They're both the same so you can use either. Now in the MIDI monitor just tick the boxes for controllers and sysx. We'll untick the others. Both of these are standard message types used for control. Now remember we're pretending we haven't got a manual so we have to assume Korg could use either type. Now back on the microcorg we'll look at the matrix to find the oscillator 2 wave function. It's in the top section so turn the top switch to os2 then knob 1 controls the wave shape. And turn this from one end to the other and watch the monitor. You can clear the monitor first if you like. Now you should see several MIDI messages, one per line, which are shown in both hexadecimal format, which is these three pairs of values at the start of each line, followed by a more readable translation using decimal numbers. Now as before, don't panic, you don't need to understand hex numbers, just try and spot values which remain fixed and those which change as you rotate the knob. Now in this case the first two values are fixed at B0 for E and the third value changes from 0 through 40 to 7F. Now if you also look at the microcorg you'll see these three values correspond to the wave shapes saw, square and triangle. Now click the functions button in the editor and look down the list of functions for an output pattern which looks similar to what we've seen. And try and match the rotation term, RR, with the value that changes. Now the second entry down matches this pattern. It's a controller function, which is probably what we expected. The 4E is the controller number, and the RR is this value that changes. Now the monitor shows the more readable form as CC number 78, with values 0, 64 and 127. So if you've forgotten how to do controllers we just click the question mark next to controller and this is the syntax. We'll get rid of that screen. So we can type this in afresh if we like. LA label wave 1 bank 1 knob 3 function cc and cc number 78. Give it a comment, ask to wave shape. Now as we've seen before this will send a range of values from 0 to 127 to the microcorg when the drayback knob is turned. Now looking at the monitor it only needs three discrete values 0, 64 and 127. But if we're lucky, the microcorg might ignore all the other values. Now, as we've got the manual, we can cheat and verify that this is in fact the case. But if your synth is fussier, you can use a special editor function called user defined, which is this one at the bottom, which allows you to specify ranges as discrete, non contiguous values. But this is way outside the scope of this video. So just contact me if you need help with this. So let's repeat this for the other functions. We'll clear the log and turn the oscillator to coarse tune or semitones and we can see it uses CC number 18 with the full range 0 to 127. We'll clear that and try the fine tune.
and you can see this uses CC19. So the definitions file or preset for the microcorg is now something like this. I've just changed a few of the knob numbers so that they line up vertically. If you look at the labels screen, this is what it will look like. So let's send them to the Dre bank and see the result. Thank you.